Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Indiscipline Mind podcast for Friday, October 30th, 2015. I got me my Starbucks. I didn't have decaf today. Yeah, so I, I've, I learned that I could get a, what they call a uh, Cafe Americano, which is about the same price, and it's basically, you can get decaf, and they make it for you, so. It's essentially espresso with some water in it, I think. Um, so it's a little different flavor, but it's not bad. I probably like the regular Pike better. But, you know, it is what it is. I, I, took, I took the big riderly leap really wasn't that big of a ride early leap. But I finally decided to try out the 800-pound elephant in the novel writing room and downloaded Scrivener. And I'm going to write my nano project in Scrivener. Um, the friend we met in, in um, Port Huron, he used a Scrivener and, and he was actually able to pick it up for pretty cheap and it's something I thought about because it's kind of it's it's you know it's from the same basic thought process as Y Rider it's probably a bit more polished you know as I would expect with the purchase product it feels like they brought the price down the price of Scrivener right now is 40 bucks and and I seem to remember it was more like 50 or 60 or something but it, it they're, they're pretty accommodating to the nano folks because they've got a special, you know, so they do always have a, a free trial version that you can use for 30 days, which is cutting a little fine for, for nano novels. So they've got a special link that you can get to from the nano page where you can download Scrivener and anytime after October 23rd, which it obviously, obviously is, and it gives you an extended an extended trial through like uh, December 7th. So you've got enough time to enough time to um, you know, use it for nano and a little bit of time there afterwards you know, just so you can if you decide you don't like it, you can get your novel out of it uh, you can, yeah, before, before time expires. So I thought that was pretty nice. They offer 20% off if you're a NaNoWriMo participant. And if you finish, you'll get a special code where you can get it for 50% off. So since the going price right now is 40 bucks, that would get it down to 20 So, yeah, I thought, well, why not? I've spent 20 bucks on a lot more frivolous things. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write in it this year. And if... I like it. I'll, I'll, I'll buy it. If I win, well, even if I don't win, I'll probably buy it. Um, that is, won't get the nice 50% discount, but I'll get, what, eight bucks off. But I'm planning on winning, so therefore I am planning, I, I should, I will get that code. And, and, and assuming I like it and don't just hate it, then I'll probably, probably go and get it. It already seems to have a much better, um, spell check engine uh, than what Y Writer does. And that's probably my biggest beef with Y Writer at this point. Uh, the other thing that stood out to me just watching a couple of the, t- the tutorials is that you don't have to number your chapters while you're working in uh, in Scrivener. You can just, you know, if you want to give them headings or whatever. Uh, and, and I tend to. And then what it'll do is is when you ex- or what do they what do they call it compile I think but it's basically when you export it it'll automatically number the chapters in the order that you have them at the time so that's kind of cool. And why writer you you number them but then you could always re- if you rearrange them you could tell it to renumber them but I thought this was kind of nice too so so yeah that's I'm looking forward to getting there and playing with it. Thing I talk about a little about today is we've got a guy who is one of the commentators for um, Fox Sports Detroit. He does the Tigers game. He's a color commentator on Tigers games. There's a guy named Rod Allen. He used to be a player, 
And he's got this phrase he uses sometimes, and he's, I, I know he's not the only one who uses it. It seems to be a sports thing. At least that's the only vernacular in which I've heard it. And that is, you know, if somebody does a really good play, he'll say, I see you, Miguel Cabrera. And I was like, okay, first time I heard it, I was, I was like, okay. And then he did an Ace Hardware commercial where, you know, the, the conceit is, is that he's walked into an Ace Hardware and he's looking for for help on, on fertilizer. And so the Ace, helpful Ace guy tells him all about the Scott's fertilizer program, blah, 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 blah. And at the end of it, Rod says... I see a big boy, because they haven't named, is this an unnamed red shirt ace hardware guy? And it's just like, that, that ad just annoyed me. And I realized it was it was that saying. Because you know, to me, it's kind of silly for him to say, I see you, Miguel Cabrera, from the broadcast booth. Miggy's not watching the show. But... It struck me yesterday. I was I was I aming with a coworker, and we were commiserating about something. And you know I, you know she said something, and I and I responded with I hear you. And it struck me how that's kind of not too far off from I see you. And. I'm not quite sure what it is that bugs me about it so much. It's it's, it's kind of like the, uh, you know, I see what you did there. You know, what I have used and I've heard it used and that really doesn't bother me. It's just kind of acknowledgement of, oh, you made a funny. I see you put stuff together in an unusual way. I see what you did there. But I don't know, for some reason that just bugs me. Now, there are other phrases over the years that have bugged me um, that I now use. So... After a while, the bugging goes away apparently, and and then if I like, and then if I actually get to like it, I might actually start to use it. A couple of those uh, are my bad, which I don't use a ton, but I use it sometimes. You know, that's one of those things. Well, I guess I don't use it a ton. Period. I I, I some I might use it like more in an email setting probably than a vocal setting. Another one is true that. Which I tend to use a lot when I'm, when I'm also as a uh, also as a way of agreement when I'm uh, I aming with somebody at work, if we're if we're commenting upon some of the rife stupidities that go on, and some you know I, I might in agreement you know say true that, so I tend to use those two. So I don't know that I'm ever going to be like, I see you coworker. I kind of hope not because to me it's a little smarmy. Maybe that's part of the problem with it. You know, because it's say I see what you did there. You know, that's kind of like, hey, you're being clever, and I recognize it. I don't know. There's something about the delivery of the other one that it just kind of, it just, I don't know. It just, it rubs me the wrong way. It really does. Um, but I, I'm also, you know, after my, my experience yesterday, I'm also it's been kind of made clear to me that it's not that far from other things that I use, other expressions that I use. So I, I probably just need to get over a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just his delivery. Although I have, I have seen, I have heard other commentators use it since. Um, I don't know that I like it any better. So I, I don't know that it's just, I don't like Rod Allen's delivery. I, I don't think that's the case. Um, It might just be the fact that it's just, it's just so oblique to me, you know. The thing about it is I see what you did there is you're saying it to the person who's being clever. You know, either via Twitter or vocally or, or what have you. It's a acknowledgement that is person to person, I guess I'll say. I was going to say face to face. I thought, if you're on Twitter, you're not face to face. 
Whereas, you know, the uses, the only uses that I've experienced with this, the person who is getting this acknowledgement, you know, unless he happens to rewatch the broadcast for some reason, or his wife says, you know, hey, Rod Allen's dead, I see you. I kind of doubt that they're like waiting for the commentators to acknowledge when they have a good play. You know, it's, I don't know, it's, it's the usage of it, it just seems weird. You know. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's the fact that it's a conversational, it's a conversational phrase, but it's not being said in a conversation. And maybe it's the usage that really bugs me more than anything. It might be different, you know, if it was like, you know, they were talking about a game and, and with a player. And he said, I see you, Miguel Cabrera. You got three home runs in that game. I, I would probably have less problems with that. So I guess it's probably the usage. Here I am. I'm evaluating. I'm figuring out what it is I don't like about this as I talk about it. So, yeah. <sighs> yeah. That's, that's kind of my, uh, um, uh, I don't want to say literary. It's more of a... It's not grammar. I guess it'd be usage. My my phrase usage peeve of the of the day for you. But I'm at eleven and some odd minutes. I think uh, I think that'll be it for today. Uh, I plan to be on the road tomorrow. I need to go to Home Depot and get some more painting supplies. So um, I will no about I will no doubt be talking to you then. So be seeing you. <laughs>